quick and fast. Okay. Come on, and add that. Sure. So, do you want me to just ask him if he's coming? Yeah, why, why did you ask okay, him? Okay, I'm just going to run the rest Yeah, of that sounds good. So, um... Reverence God's presence, and I want us to do that just, just one more time, but just with our voices, because there's power in praise this morning, and, and I believe God wants to minister to you. God wants to do something in, in your heart. Maybe your spirit's even being stirred right now. That's the presence of God. That's God speaking to you, and, and the Bible says that if, if we know Him, if we have a relationship with Him, that we can call Him Lord, that we can call Him God, that we can call Him Father. So right now, with every head bowed, every eye closed, be, before we sing, I just want to ask you that question. Do you know Him? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? He loves you. He's got great things in store for your life. He, he wants to forgive you of your past. He wants to give you a hope and a future. He wants to transform your life, but you've got to open your heart to Him. The Bible says the way we do that is we just confess with our mouth that He's Lord and that we believe in our heart that he was crucified, buried, but three days later raised again. And we believe that the Bible says we will be saved. I want to give you that opportunity right now. That's you this morning. God's speaking to your heart. Say, I, I don't know him. I'm away from him. Maybe at one time I had a relationship, but now I'm, I'm, I'm kind of on my own and I want to come back. Would you just raise your hand this morning? I'm going to pray with you. We're going to pray and we're going to believe. Yes, sir, in the back. Anybody else this morning? God, I'm coming to you today because I need you. I, I need your presence in my life. Anybody else this morning? Yes, hands in the back. Anybody else? Anybody else? God, speak into your heart today. J just let him in. Just obey. Anybody else? Well, we're going to pray this morning right where you are. And I just pray that you, you repeat this after me. Say, dear Jesus, I open my heart to you right now. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come in and that you would begin to change me. God, I thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. And right now, I believe that you are cleansing me, forgiving me of all the wrong things I've ever done. And God, right now, you're renewing me. You're making me a brand new person. Those things that used to have a hold on me no longer do because you're setting me free. God, I open my life to you. I want to follow you. I want to serve you. God, give me strength. Give me wisdom. God, have your way. In Jesus' name. Can we sing that? Just with our voices that he's holy? Can we just spend a few more moments in his presence? Just forget about everything that's happening this week. I don't know what it was, but he's worthy. He's on the throne. He hasn't forgotten you. Let's just worship for a moment, just with our voices. Guys, would you help us? build our faith today. Give us ears to hear your word here in a few moments. God, just have your way. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody says, Amen. 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 Hey, we are glad you are here this morning. Before you're seated, can you just shake somebody's hand? Just welcome somebody next to you. Let them know. Is there one that does? Thank you. There's the magic one. Thank you, John. Wow, it is fantastic to be here with you guys this morning. I'm really excited to have the chance to uh, share with you and continue your Life App series. I want to thank Pastor Mike for this opportunity to come and share with you. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Joshua Ertz. I'm the Chi Alpha Missionary, your Chi Alpha Missionary, to your very own UW Oshkosh. And uh, I'm here to talk to you this morning about life apps and to give you an offer, or act, not opportunity, but an update on what God has been doing on your campus uh, through the mission of Chi Alpha. But it is exciting to see the new life that has come to this church through through you and through Pastor Ben and through many of you guys who have been working to infuse it into this church over the last year by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm just really excited. Wow. I tell you what, man, change and uh, life and excitement coming to this church. But uh, I've enjoyed, I've been traveling a lot recently, going to church to church throughout Wisconsin and throughout the Midwest to give people an update on Chi Alpha, what we've been doing, what God has been accomplishing through missions giving uh, to the university. But I've enjoyed listening to Pastor's series uh, the last two weeks, his teaching on life apps, and uh, it's been inspiring and challenging me to seek wisdom and to apply what we find in God's Word in Proverbs to our life. So what life app can I share with you this morning? What proverb challenges us to live a sacrificial, missional life that is focused on others rather than on ourselves? Is there even a Proverbs like that? I mean, written by Solomon hundreds of years before Jesus even came to earth? There is, actually. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30, believe it or not, says this. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. Amen. Wow! Amen. Isn't that incredible? Look at that. I mean, read it again. The fruit, the, the behavior, the works, the reward of the righteous is a tree of life. And he who wins souls is wise. We've been taught the last two weeks to seek and apply wisdom to our lives. And scripture shows us, even here in Proverbs, that the person who wins souls is wise. It's wise to win souls and converge. The, uh, the Chi Alpha here at, at UW Oshkosh, we desire to be a spirit-filled community of Christ followers. Just like the early church. And my students, those of you who have been involved in our group, you can amen with me, you can shout, you can agree with me so they know I'm telling the truth. That'd be awesome. <laughs> but what did that look like? Well, we find a description of it in Acts 2. Verses 42 through 47, it says this. It says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together, and they had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And get this, the Lord added to their number daily Amen. those who were being saved. Amen. You see, this passage actually highlights what life in Chi Alpha or Converge is supposed to be like. Chi Alpha has a five-fold mission or purpose as to why we exist on campus. And these five things we try to do on a regular basis, these five things are discipleship, fellowship, 
worship, prayer, and mission for evangelism, outreach, winning souls for Jesus. And this scripture passage focuses on all five of those things. You know, we read here that all believers, all the believers were together and they had everything in common. Last week alone, Pastor Mike talked about the need for relationships, the need for unity, the, the need to have a place of refuge, a place where we know that these are my friends. They love me and, and they will be there for me. They're not going to stab me in the back and treat me like the rest of the world does. They're going to speak the truth to me in love and so forth. We need that. And when the world is, is turning more and more against those who follow Jesus, you need a place where you feel, I have family. Amen. Amen. And I'm not going to get beat up all the time when I'm there. This is what the church is supposed to look like and what our students experience at Converge. Next we read, selling their possessions and goods. They, they gave to anyone as he had need. This is talking about the idea of God's family showing concern for one another. That when someone is in need, that we actually give, whether it be money or possessions or time or whatever that we give to help meet that need. That we have concern for one another. Beautiful to watch students, even this last week in our Chi Alpha group, who sacrificially give to help those in need around them. We have an international student who is, you know, on the verge of having to go home after she's graduated because no business will hire her, and she has a, a great desire and the gifts, the talent, the drive, and everything to stay here. This girl who loves Jesus and is trying to honor the system by not being some sort of illegal immigrant. She wants to do it right and is hitting roadblock after roadblock. And she needs to raise this money. And it was just amazing to me to watch students, just less than 40 of them, give over $200 just to bless this girl, to help her be able to reach her goal. Because she's family. She's one of ours. And we don't want to lose her. We don't want to see her have to go home and have opportunities robbed from her. Probably these students. Third, every day they met together. Pastor Mike has talked about the need to be together even multiple times throughout the week. Like on Wednesday nights, our students meet together on Monday nights, but we also have life groups and discipleship core groups and prayer groups and we get together and go and do evangelism and parties and lots of other fun activities that happen nearly every night to give students the chance to really live life together. Because that's what the church is supposed to be. Not just a Sunday morning thing. Next one, it says... <laughs> They broke bread together in their homes, and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God. This is a reference to communion and how they used to have church in house churches and worship together. There, there's something about being in each other's homes, you guys. I love that our students are constantly posting on Facebook, Hey, come together to my house. Let's hang out. Let's do stuff together. And it's disturbing, isn't it, when the church only meets on Sunday and we're hardly Facebook friends, much less actually hanging out and doing life together outside of the four walls of the church. See, there's something about being in each other's homes and their dorm rooms. You become really familiar with each other. You become family. And that is how most of our students refer to Chi Alpha on Facebook. That converges their family. The idea is that the body of Christ, as the body of Christ, we would pull together and really be brother and sister to each other just as much as your natural family, that we would be that in the spirit in the family of God. The last one, and this is where we're going this morning, and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. It says, and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Now, why do you think that was happening? How, how was that happening? 
Give me some answers. Why do you think the Lord was adding to their number daily? There's actually a little bit of Q&A to this. You have to think. Why? People were reaching out. Good. Something else. Why were they being added? What's that? Prayer. Good. Discipleship. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes, they're helping each other, right? You see, that's, that's what I'm talking about. They were telling people about Jesus. They were inviting people, like Pastor talked about. They were helping people. Exactly everything that we just went through. Who, who wouldn't want to be a part of that? But who wouldn't want to be a part of that? I want that. Don't you? That sounds fun. People loving each other, being concerned for each other, meeting together, sharing meals together on a regular basis. I mean, I, I love the food part, you know. I mean, that's just, you know, let's get together and eat, right? I mean, that's what we're good at, so let's do it. It's attractive to people, not just to those who know Jesus, but to those who do not know Jesus. Because the love of Jesus is different than any other kind of love, isn't it? It's totally different than anything the world can give. It's so patient. It's so generous and kind. The fruit of the Spirit, or as we read in Proverbs, the fruit of the righteous is just so appealing. And so when we live out who God calls us to be, the lost will be attracted to that. It is a tree of life to them. So what does it mean to be a missional community? We are not supposed to be a group of people, a, a community that sits and looks at our belly button and says, wow, isn't it great that I found my friends and people who care about me. We're not supposed to be selfish and inward. Rather, we are to be outward focused on the rest of the world. So what does it look like to be a missional community, to be a person that applies the mission of God to their life, a person that is not just looking to have our own needs met, but we are looking out and trying to meet the needs of other people who do not know Jesus. This is the early church, guys. It was a radical, on fire, and and. A live church, and it constantly had new life added every single day. People were being added to their number. Don't you want to see that? Amen. Amen. I don't want to just read about the early church. I want to live it. And I want to see that here in Oshkosh, on our campus, in our community, where it's not just in this room going, yay, Jesus. But we're sharing it with others on the campus, in our workplaces, in our families, everywhere as we are going. We are making disciples. And new people get added to our number every day. Eve, who wins souls, is wise. I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians 5.20, or you can just look on our app right here. It says, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. This is Caiaphas theme verse. What is an ambassador? What's an ambassador? Give me an answer. A representative. What do they do? Represent one country to another. So if you're an ambassador for the United States to, say, Peru, all right, and you, you go to Peru and you're the ambassador for the United States, you have to be really careful because this is not your home country, right? You're just visiting there. But when I go there, I represent the U.S. And so I have to be careful because what I do is what they are going to believe my whole country is like. Right? So if I'm rude and obnoxious, they're going to think, man, everybody in the U.S. is rude and obnoxious. <laughs> so if we are representing Christ, if we are his ambassadors, 
His representers, when people see us, they should see Jesus. The fruit of Christ's righteousness in us should lead people to Him, to the tree of life, to eternal life. We are Christ's ambassadors. We are His sent ones to the university, to the marketplaces, to the world, to reconcile people to Him. We are called to not just be a son or daughter ourselves, but to be His ambassador, His representative that represents His message of reconciliation to all those around. So when you get saved, when you come to know Jesus as Lord, why doesn't he just transport you to heaven? And wouldn't that be easier? You know, got it, boom, take him up. Whew. That was a close one. <laughs> I mean, why after we get saved, doesn't he just take us to heaven right away? Why do we have to stay here and sit here and suffer and try so hard? I mean, wouldn't it just be easier? Why? Why didn't he just take us? What do you think? We got work to do. What else? Learning. learning. Tell, others about Tell others about him. Very good. If he took us right to heaven, nobody else would be here to tell people about Jesus. We've been chosen to stand in to tell others about him. He wants to partner with us to take his message to the whole world. And he has a purpose. For every person in this room, each one of you has a sphere of influence that connects you to people that no one else can connect with like the way you do. Amen. And God wants to use you in that sphere of influence. Amen. So what does being missional look like? Well, Jesus had some words in Matthew 5, 13 and a sermon on the mount talk about it. it says this you are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its saltiness how can it be made salty again it's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out trampled underfoot it goes on to say you are the light of the world a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. What's the main point of what Jesus is telling them? What's he saying? Don't hide it. Don't hide it. Good. Exemplify him. He's saying stand out. Go public. Don't hide. Don't be a closet Christian. People, I hate this. Well, my faith is just personal. It's private. It's just for me. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> You're wrong. You're just wrong. All the way around wrong. God has not made your faith private for you. It's not about you. If you understand what it means to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus, you understand that your whole purpose, your whole reason for being is to go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them everything that I have commanded you, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is God's message to students on our campus, and it's his message for you, for Oshkosh. Amen. That's right. Isn't it easier to hide? Just blend in, just go with the flow, because I don't want any opposition. It is. It's much easier to do that, honestly, but that's not why we're here. We're here to be Christ's ambassadors, his representatives to people who will never, ever darken the door of a church on our campus, in your workplaces. We have professors. You have co-workers, family members, some of whom are really, really, really not saved. People who would never, ever go to church. Some of these people from countries where it is illegal to pass out a tract or, or a Bible, and yet God sends them to UW Oshkosh of all places. And they think they're here to get a degree. <laughs> 
I think they're here to become a disciple. Amen. God has set us here to be salt and to be light and to share the good news of Jesus with those who have not yet heard. We are Christ's ambassadors and so are you to your world, to your workplace, to your sphere of influence. How are they going to hear if they never go to a church? There are people you know, like the professors and students I know, who will never come, no matter how cool and flashy and wonderful our flyers are, or churches. So what do we do? We go to them. He who in souls is wise. That's what I love about campus ministry. We fly in under the radar. Undercover missionaries. God wants to do that through many of you too. Your bosses think that they hired, you know, a teacher or a businessman or a, a work hand, but really they hired an undercover missionary. That's just your ticket to get in. Go in on mission as a witness, as an ambassador, on mission, careful to ask God, how do you want to use me in this context who are the people that you're calling me to? We, we obviously can't go to everyone, but who are the people that your spirit is working on that you want me to come alongside of with you and just be your representative to them? Who? And you know what you do? You just hang out with them. It's really not that hard, guys. Go! Eat lunch with them. Get to know them. Laugh. Enjoy yourself. I heard this question from the servant. Why are so many Christians I know so grumpy? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Shouldn't they be happy? Shouldn't they be filled with joy? Amen. Enjoy your coworkers. Eventually it could come to a place where you enjoy each other's company so much that you actually start to do it in the evening as a group, your own little life group of fellow co-workers. So early in the morning, like some are doing, as you build relationship with them and just be yourself, guess what? They're going to find out over time. You're different. The fruit of your righteousness it's going to become a tree of life. They invite you to hang out. Understand you're not like them, but that's okay. We like you. Come hang out with us. It's incredible what can happen when you fly in under the radar, on mission, through the relationship. You have this opportunity to pray with them for salvation. You're going to have opportunity to pray for people, for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, for healing in their bodies. It's such an adventure, you guys. God wants to do that, not just through me, not, not just through students, but through all of us. Through our students at UW Oshkosh. They're not just there to go to class and make grades for a far greater purpose and he wants to do the same thing through you and your workplace. Your true purpose is not to make a paycheck. Your true purpose is to make an impact on people for eternity. Amen. Amen. How many friends, how many family members and co-workers could stand before God brought to salvation because he brought you into their life and you were bold enough to love them through relationship and sharing the truth of who Jesus is with them. Go public. Don't hide. Don't be ashamed of it. My goodness, we have the best news in the universe, don't we? Amen. Amen. We need to be salt and light. Colossians chapter 4. Verse 5 to 6. Be wise in the way that you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. What are some of the uses of salt? I got some salt up here. What do we, what do, we do with salt? What's it for? What, what can you do with it? 
flavor, add flavor to your food. Very good, it enhances flavor. What else does it do? Preserves. Preserves, it preserves it, very good. Something else? Helps eyes. Cleans? Yeah, it can actually clean wounds, it can actually bring healing, what else? John Lyon was like 62 uses for salt, I had no idea. I was like, wow, 62, I need more salt. <laughs> Makes the furnace hotter. Good, good. Makes you thirsty, right? You got something that's really salty, then you, you, you're thirsty, you want to drink. So, so salt enhances flavor, right? I mean, you, you just you take some, you know, and then you just add it to the food. <laughs> enhances the flavor of stuff that you do. It's very beneficial, right? But you need, you need small amounts, right? Just, just, just a little bit. Why? See, guys, he says it's seasoned with salt. Being missional doesn't have to be big things, huge. It could be small gestures. Just, just going and sitting next to someone who's left out. Seeing the guy at the workplace who is awkward and different and doesn't have it all together and just inviting him to come, come join you. And the fruit of your righteousness will be a tree of life to that person. That belonging before believing. Just a little bit. It just is the small gestures, you guys. It makes you thirsty. You add some salt, and you get thirsty. And in the same sense, when you're around people, the salt of your conversation, the salt of your life is going to make people thirsty. They're going to begin to want what you have. Who is this person? They're so incredible. They're so nice. They have so much joy. They, what is that? I want that. They have this peace and this purpose and this meaning in their life. Wow, I want that. They should look at our lives. It should make them thirsty for God. It's a preservative, right? What should that look like spiritually with us? Preservative. It's a saving agent, right? It saves their lives. We bring hope and healing. We don't tear them down. I know that sarcasm is a part of the church. If you would just, if you would just go to work and not be sarcastic, that in itself would be enough salt to make people thirsty. Because you're not like the rest of the world, picking on people, putting them down. If you spoke life, if you were Barnabas and encourager, they would want to come near you. Healing properties. We should, we would be a source of healing in people's lives. We'd be the first people they run to. But salt by itself, in one huge chunk, is not good, right? I got this this thing down here, like this. <laughs> this is kind of useless. Like, if I come up to somebody and I'm like, salt. <laughs> <laughs> this is how Christians are, right? They're not like this. In someone's life, they, they walk up to somebody and say, did you know your life is, <laughs> when you When you get too much salt in your food, you know, forgive me, Pastor. When you get, you know, when it's just pretty soon, you're just not hungry for that food anymore, right? Because salt in one big chunk, this is just not good. Ick. No, thank you. I will stay away, please. If you take a tablespoon of salt and swallow it, what is that like? Think about that. Think of the application here, the life app. 
Anybody get that? Amen. You can't just be a one-man army. You can't just blast them all at once. We aren't at UW Oshkosh, and you are not here at New Life Community Church to just gather together with ourselves and just look at our belly buttons, and we've got our little family and our little club, and that is not why we're here. The other thing is, salt by itself is purposeless. Salt is useless if it stays in the shaker. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't help anyone. It doesn't season anything. Could you change your mindset and realize or think about this church as a salt shaker and realize that your purpose is to get out? Christian, are you staying in the shaker? Are you playing it safe? Why are you saying, God, what is your calling? What is your purpose, your mission for me in my life? I want to go out and be salt. I want to be what you're calling me to be just through small, simple things. It doesn't have to be huge or magnificent. Just small, simple things. Just intentionally praying for people and loving on them, sharing Christ in simple ways. It draws them to Jesus. We like that, but why? Why does it make us squirm all the time? Because of the few verses before, back in Matthew 5. Look at verse 11 and 12. Blessed are you when people insult you, when they persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted you, the prophets who were before you, they were also persecuted. Amen. Jesus says, I want you to go public, but it's going to be difficult. It's going to be uncomfortable sometimes, and you're going to get persecuted. People are going to hate you. They're going to insult you and say all kinds of things falsely about you. But wait, rejoice. Why? Because great is your reward in heaven. And here's my question. Which kingdom are you living for? Are you living for the praises of men? Do we fear man, other people, more than God? Do you want their praises more than, than his? If we live for eternity, for his kingdom, we will have no regrets. He who wins souls is wise. That's the life path. But it's hard. And it's scary. And we need the power of the Holy Spirit to help us do it. That's the great thing about God. He doesn't just call you to do it. He says, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to put my spirit inside of you. I'm going to empower you to do it. Supernatural boldness. Supernatural love for the lost. But you need the spirit of God poured out upon you. But that's a message for a different day. Not for today. Settle down, Joshua. <laughs> Let's recommit to the task. The great co-mission. Let's receive what we need for ourselves and then go out. Let the fruit of his righteousness in your life be a tree of life for those that we meet. Let us apply wisdom and seek to win souls. This is what we do, how we live our life on campus through Chi Alpha. Because of your investment into this ministry, you have helped the hand of God reach into the lives of students who needed Jesus. 
And you need to know that we have seen dozens of students commit their lives to Jesus over the last six years. Plug into discipleship core groups, become core leaders themselves. I have a few quick pictures for you here. And so, since we've been here, guys, since we launched our campus, we've been privileged to baptize 87 students in water on the university campus in the last six years. I've got one and a half students every month. We've seen over 90 students ask for and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit Amen. in six years. Our students continue to preach the gospel open air in front of their cafeteria and on the streets of Oshkosh in the tradition of Jacob Bach and his red box. And we've seen several students saved and ministered to. Is it easy? No. Is it always fun? No. Is it always convenient? Ask them. No, it's not. But we do it. Because it's what God's called us to do. And the rewards, the fruit, is beyond what we can ever even know. What does it look like? Look at this video. Check this out. This is Nate. Nate became a Christ follower two weeks ago and is still a bit giddy about it. No, he's trying not to do cartwheels in public. Nate became a believer partly because of Kim. Yet, oddly enough, Kim and Nate have never met. Now, is this possible? Well, let's take a look. Kim loved Jesus from an early age, and in college she had a huge impact on her friends. While most of her peers used their college years to, well, experiment, Kim didn't. She remained committed to her faith, and it showed. It especially showed to Lisa, her roommate, who confessed to Kim that she wanted whatever it was that made Kim so strong. Kim shared her faith with Lisa, and Lisa believed. Years later, at Lisa's first real job, she met Thomas. Thomas was hit by a drunk driver when he was 13, and still carried a lot of anger and bitterness. Thomas and Lisa became friends, and it wasn't long before he started going to church with Lisa and her husband. After a lot of studying and searching, Thomas gave his life to Christ. Fast forward a few years. Thomas became a public speaker and was often asked to speak at large events. See, when he became a believer, Thomas developed a new perspective on life. He stopped resenting what had been taken from him and started being thankful for the second chance he had been given. On one particular day, Thomas shared about overcoming hardship and what it means to choose joy. He was so passionate that a number of people were inspired to share a link to his video. The video of Thomas inspired James, too. And if anyone needed inspiration, it was him. James had a ton of issues. He spent most of his life as a passive husband, an absent father, and a horrible friend. That said, no one disliked him more than he disliked himself. But everything changed the night he happened to watch Thomas online. Something clicked and he knew what he had to do. He surrendered his miserable life to someone greater, and he was forever changed. James fought hard to make up for the lost years with his family. But he also began working with young men who were in danger of throwing their lives away. One of those men was Nate. Nate didn't really know his own dad, and he had no real direction in life, ultimately bouncing from one bad decision to another. Because of that, he often found himself in trouble with the law. No one had ever showed him what it looked like to be a real man. That is, until he met James. James became the first father figure Nate ever had. He learned about honesty, self-control, humility, and integrity, and where those traits come from. Two months later, Nate publicly declared his belief in Christ. And of course, James was there. Now you can see the connection. Nate was impacted by James. He was influenced by Thomas. Thomas saw an uncommon joy in Lisa, who learned of Jesus from Kim. Kim's relationship with God eventually led to Nate's. Funny how these two people have never met, and never will. That disciple cycle. The fruit of righteousness is a tree of life.
he who insults his wise. You see a picture next Sam. Many of you guys know Sam. One of your own. <laughs> Sam, when he graduated from high school after growing up in church here at New Life, said, I need to make a difference on this campus. He was excited to get plugged into Chi Alpha, and he determined to live a life like Kim's in this video. And Sam told a story about a girl named Amy. And Amy, uh, Sam was coming out of a class one day and, and felt the Lord speaking to him and challenging him to say, you need to go talk to that girl. And he was like, God, I don't even know this girl. Like, I think her name is Amy, but I'm not even sure, you know. We felt this impression, you need to, you need to go and just say hi. So Sam comes up to Amy and he says, hey, it's, it's Amy, right? She's like, yeah. Who are you? He says, hi, my name is Sam. Says, How you doing? She says, actually, I'm, I'm not doing so well, actually. Sam's like, well, you want to go talk about it? Want to, want to go sit down and find out what's going on? Later on, Sam found out that Amy had made a decision later that day that she was going to go and commit suicide when she got back to her room. She was so lonely, so desperate. Lost her boyfriend, was in a new town far away from home. No one had come up to her and even greeted her before Sam. After some more conversations, a few weeks, Amy came to realize she never really had a real relationship with Jesus. She committed her life to Jesus Christ, and that day we launched a 24-7 prayer movement on campus. Amy, brand new baby Christian, started signing up for hour after hour of prayer. It changed her. She got plugged into a core group. You see your lovely little Bethany there. Claire, who's gone on to marriage and family and kids. Poured into Amy's life. You see Amy was baptized in water later that semester in this next picture. I think. Yeah. Amy became a uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, and God did great things in her life, and a, a year later, to the day, she was sharing her testimony, her story of how she got saved at Converge one night. And there was a kid there named Quinn, who looks like this. Quinn is mostly blind, he, he can hardly see, he's blind in one eye completely, just barely see out the other, he's had congenital glaucoma you know, from birth. And Quinn showed up that night because two girls, Holly and Heidi, you see from the next one, had recently got saved and realized they needed to start to let their light shine on other people. And they said, we need to start reaching out to those who are marginalized. So they saw Quinn standing there with this cane, you know, at a stoplight on Algoma. Many of you guys drive by it every day. And they said, look at him. We should go be nice to him. And so these lovely little twin girls walked up beside Quinn and said, Hey, I'm Holly. I'm Heidi. Who are you? And he's like, I'm Quinn. <laughs> you know? They said, Hey, would you like to come and make a whole lot of friends? And he says, Yeah. You need to come with us tonight. We're going to this thing called Converge, and there's a whole lot of people there who would love to get to know you. And even the half-blind guy knows that when there's two lovely girls, twins, <laughs> asking you to go somewhere, you just, you go, you know, lead the way, I'm coming with you, absolutely. <laughs> so Quinn shows up that day, he shows up at Converge, and Amy begins to share her story about God, how, rescue, how God rescued her, how he saved her. And Quinn is just a mess. And he's just sobbing in the back. Now Holly and Heidi, who are phenomenal women of God now, were just brand new at this. And they didn't really know what to do. And they're like, oh, but he's like, it was crying everywhere. Holly comes right over, he's like, you, you gotta, he's, he's a mess, help him. So I come over and I sit down by Quinn and I said, it's Quinn, right? He says, yeah. I said, how you doing, man? He says, I am not good. I said, what's wrong? Say, I need Jesus. But I don't know what to do. 
Can you help me, please? Yes, I can. You have to pray with Ken Quinn to receive Jesus. He got plugged into a guy's core group who discipled him, loved him, mentored him, became family to him. Later that semester, Quinn was baptized in water. You see from this next picture, he was thrilled to commit his life to Jesus. Oh, because a couple girls just stepped out and just invited. Quinn has graduated and moved on. He lives in Minneapolis now. He actually works at a school for the blind to help people learn how to live without sight. We've prayed for Quinn for healing for years. But Quinn <laughs> is able to go into a sphere of influence that no one else can go and be salt in that place. People are coming to Jesus. And last October, there was a guy named Richie who got married. And his groomsmen were all from his core group. His disciples. These guys were his brothers. They were his best men. Even Quinn. You see, guys, it's incredible to watch how the circle goes. Coming back, you'll see this next picture. Very own Sam. Sam, after four years graduating, being our president, vice president, felt a call to Kyle. Went away for a year to do an internship in Washington, has recently returned to join us on staff to help us continue to reach students for Christ. Along with him was another girl named Rachel. You see her? Rachel also just returned from Washington. She is going to be directly overseeing our outreach to international students, giving full attention to integrating them into our community. Of course, you know Brian and Angie Bishop. You'll see many of you have met with them face to face and are they're going on to plan the new Chi Alpha because what we have at Oshkosh should just be at Oshkosh. Brian and Angie have been a part of our team since the beginning are now launching in a new place, but not just them. Rachel is working with us, Sam is working with us, but Justin Strashen, another one of your very own, has also returned from an internship with Chi Alpha after being called to do it full time. He's going to be launching a new Chi Alpha at Fox Valley Tech right here in Oshkosh across the river. We're going to work together to see things expand. Another one you may know is Matt and Rachel Helper. Matt has also come on staff with us part time and doors are opening. We're still testing the waters here, but it very much looks like the people in Fond du Lac are hungry for a new Chi Alpha, and it looks like things are leading for Matt to launch a new Chi Alpha at UW Fond du Lac as well. You see, why just add if we can multiply? Right? It's really, it's exciting. You guys, I want to thank you for your overwhelming kindness. We, we hope that your heart sings as much as ours does and what God is doing through your faithful giving to missions. And I want to encourage you to continue to give sacrificially because you have no idea how God will multiply your investment and store up eternal rewards for you in heaven. Do you understand that all of this is possible? All of this because you give. Because you pray, because you have sent us to go where you can't. Imagine what the lives of these students would have been like had we not been there to minister to them. Lives like Amy's and Quinn's. 87 other baptized people. There are more and more and more. In just 10 weeks, we hope to launch our seventh year on campus. 3,600 new freshmen will flood our campus. And we need to be ready for them. However, we have a lot of monthly support that we need to make up before then. When we first came here seven years ago, this church was gracious enough, believed in us enough to partner with us at an unprecedented $775 a month. 
nearly 10% of our budget, which is actually normal for the local church where a Chi Alpha is planted because your church has and, and still does stand to benefit the most from this outreach to this university. However, over the past years, that support has dropped off to about $185 a month. Still a very gracious amount. Don't misunderstand me. But nearly $600 a month less than originally promised. And you can see how that would add up quickly and painfully. Now we realize many people have come and gone from this church in that time. Some cannot continue to give like they would have. But the fact remains that in order for us to continue to minister at UWO and lead these initiatives on other campuses, we must get to 100% of our budget goal. All told, we have over $1,000 a month of support that we need to re-raise in order to continue. And I am working throughout the summer, traveling across the Midwest, back and forth, North Dakota, Minnesota, and all over Wisconsin to try to raise the support. But I'm asking you this morning, would you give me a boost? Would you give us a boost? Would you be able to recommit to what you once did? Would you personally consider partnering with us monthly and help us meet that goal? If you're willing to begin a new partnership with us, or even if you have been, this is important, if you have been faithfully supporting us by giving each month through the church in the offering, whatever, Pastor Mike has asked me to ask you, please, to discontinue sending your support that way through the church. It just wastes time and resources, and this is why. All the money that you give in here that's designated to go to us has to be collected and then processed through the main office, which adds hours of extra work for Cindy. And then they have to send it all in, and then it just takes longer. It's just a waste of her time, a waste of everybody's time. It would be much more beneficial if you give and if you do this faithfully or if you're willing to, to make your own faith promise online and to give online each month that way and save your church that hassle and that issue. They will still get giving credit because you can note on there that your giving is from new life. So it's not going to change anything. It's just going to make everything easier. And just very quickly, I know I'm out of time. I just want to show you quick how to do that. There's a website, unfortunately you can't see it here at the bottom. I want you to write this down if you're interested in any way. The website is very simple. It's giving.ag.org. Giving.ag.org. And when you go to that website, if you just put in my name and hit search, it'll bring you to this next page where you'll see my name. And then you just need to go over and click on Give Now. And when you click on Give Now, it'll take you to this next page where you can signify what dollar amount you want to give. They have a couple preset ones. They have an other box if you want to. Uh, don't worry about the giving options box. It's not really necessary, although I'd love your email address there at the bottom. And then if you're willing to do it on a monthly basis, you need to click on the Setup Recurring Gift. Okay? When you do that, it'll take you to this next page that has our name and you can put in what you want. Please make sure that that Faith Promise box is checked. And then you'll see the frequency of how often you want to give and the amount, and then you can proceed to check out. And it will let you then set up to give on a regular basis. You can have it automatically come out, which will do that on the 20th of every month. Or if you want to go on and just give every month, you can do that too. But we want to start to partner with people individually to save that time and effort and resources on the church. Plus, then I have your personal email. And rather than just getting one newsletter to the church that I hope you might see, this one will come to your email or to your home. And you'll be able to read every month about what God is doing through your giving on this campus. Please understand, these lives are not my reward. They are our reward. They're your reward for giving to missions. And there are people that Quinn is reaching, and Amanda Decky, and man, all these people, Claire, that you will never, ever meet. And 
they're still part of your reward because you helped make it happen. Amen. You made it possible for them to be there. Last thing. A supporter of mine said, you know, it's, it's really tough to give admission sometimes. I said, yeah, yeah, it is. He said, but you know what? I love it. I said, why? He said, I want you to share this with people everywhere you go. I said, all right. He says, he says it's kind of like an apple. I said, what do you mean? He says, well, how many seeds are in an apple? I said, I don't know, like eight, ten? I, I don't know. He goes, let's just say ten. Ten seeds in an apple. He goes, but how many apples are in a seed? He said, you know, I could take that apple that I've been given, that resource that I have, and I could eat that whole thing. I could just, it's mine. I could take it all. But what if, what if I just take just that one seed and I sow it, I invest it? How many apples could I reproduce through that one seed? He said, that, that is why I give to mission. I just need to take a part. Invested in the kingdom of God. I have no idea the rewards that are going to come from that seed, but I know it's going to be awesome because the word of God does not return void. And I know that the fruit of my righteousness will lead to a tree of life, right? And he who wins souls is wise. And giving is another way to empower people to win souls. If you don't want to give online or, or automatically, you can also pick up a, a paper faith promise at our table out front. We love each and every one of you. We hope you realize how much you've meant to us and how much you do for us, how grateful we are for that. Will you please remember us in prayer? And if you can help us have the needed resources to continue to touch these students, we would be very, very grateful. And we thank you. Lord bless you guys. Thank you, Pastor. Hey, if our worship team would come and just kind of help me out, I'm never going to look at salt the same way again. <laughs> Yeah, you'll take care of that for me? <laughs> Sam could do it. We'll, we'll let Sam do it. But uh, anyway, we just want to thank you for being here this morning. We're, we're going to pray. Josh and, and Heather, his wife, are going to be out there in the foyer. Please stop by, pick up a uh, faith promise. Otherwise, you can give online. We just want to continue to bless them. And that's what it's all about. You know, we, we say all the time, there are 84,161 people in this county not connected to any church. That's not talking even about our campuses. How many of you know we got a lot of work to do? Uh, and, and it's interesting what Jesus said. You know, Jesus prayed a lot of prayers. He really did. And the one prayer that blows me away time and time again when I read it is, is this. Jesus is ready to ascend to heaven. And he prays this prayer and he says, Lord, I'm not asking you to take my followers out of the world. I'm asking that you keep them here. Why? Because we got a job to do. We got a mission to do. And you know what? It's life or death. There are lives and futures and destinies hanging in the balance. That's why we're so serious. That's why we come here every Sunday. And we give it our all and try to do things to the best of our ability because it's life or death. And you know, sometimes we forget about that. And God's saying, you're part of that. You can help bring people to life. Just do a little shaking. Do a little shaking. Can we do that, church? Can we be that kind of church? That we can shake, rattle and roll, whatever you want to say, for God, for His kingdom, for lives, for eternity? That's exciting. So I want to pray for... For Josh and Heather. Guys, would you just come up here? Would your team come up here with you? If I got some of my, my prayer guys, my board, 
members, if some of you guys are here, would you help me? My wife, Lisa, Alyssa, Pastor Ben, would you guys come up here and, and help me out this morning? We just want to pray a blessing over these choice servants of God for, willing, for their willingness to simply say yes. And, and we want to partner with them. We want to, we want to bless them. And we want to see God do great things on UWO campus. So let's just pray this morning. Would you just extend your hands? It's just a just a way to say I agree with this prayer this morning and whatever I can do, whether it's pray, whether it's give, whether it's serve, I'm going to do it. And I'm just going to partner with these with these families and these couples. Let's let's pray together, church. Father God, we just thank you today for this Chi Alpha team, for Josh and Heather and Sam and Justin and the others that are coming on board, Lord God, to help build your kingdom and, and bring lives into eternity. God, we know that things are not always easy. There, there are challenges and obstacles along the way. And God, we just pray right now that you would just begin to open doors, that you would begin to open up the windows of heaven upon them, Lord, that your spirit would fall fresh on them today, that even today, this morning, they would leave here encouraged and, and just fired up in their spirit, Lord God, knowing that you're not only with them, but you're going before them. And you're going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon them. God, we just pray for this upcoming school year, for the students that are going to gather on campus, Lord God. We just thank you even now for the divine appointments that you're setting up. God, that students are going to come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, God, through their ministry. And God, as a church, we're so honored to be a part of that. God, I pray right now that you would just stir our hearts as a church. That you would help us, God, to see the importance of this ministry. That you would put it upon our hearts, Lord God, not only to pray for them and to remember them, but God, to partner with them through giving. God, let us step up, I pray. Hear your call so that we can be a part of this great harvest that you're about to do. God, as we leave here today, just continue to open our eyes and stir our hearts, Lord God, to the part that we get to play in pointing people to you and building your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody says, Amen. 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 We're going to give Josh and Heather a chance and, and their team. They're going to be right out there in the lobby. So. We ask that you don't just kind of speed off today, that if God's really kind of speaking to your heart, you, you really want to give to their ministry and be a part of what's happening, please stop by the table. They'd love to get to know you. You can get a brochure. If you ask more questions about the online thing, they'd be happy to answer that for you. But, but please don't just rush out. Ushers are also going to be at the doors for our family movie night. We've got a ticket for you because this was a great message today. You know what? We're going to do some shaking. So you got to take these cards. we got a family movie night and a family vacation. I'm asking you to, again, hand those out to people. Invite people to come. Say, hey, you don't have to understand it all, but just come and experience it. Just come and be here. And, and the thing I was reminded about this salt is, is simply this. We can all do it. See, there's no excuse. We can do it question is will we and I, I believe we have a church that's ready to do that that's willing to do that that's exciting to do that I'm proud of you guys I brag on you all the time I really do so I know you're gonna step up I know you're gonna honor God would you stand this morning let me just pray a quick blessing over you and you may be dismissed pray that you have a great great Sunday in the Lord. You can go cheer for the U.S. today as they play Portugal. Yeah, see, I do a little World Cup too. You didn't know that, right? Yeah. But let's just pray. Father God, thank you for your presence here. Thank you for stirring our hearts. Thank you for building our faith. God, thank you for just putting people, things on our mind, Lord God, that we need to go and influence and, and lead them to you and, and point them to you. So God, I pray that you bless your people. Let it be an awesome day, a day of rest, a day of relaxation, a day, God, where our, our batteries are just recharged, where you fill us with joy and strength. 
God, I pray for fresh eyes today as we leave this place to the opportunities that we'll have, I believe, even today to point people to you and to minister to people. So God bless your people, I pray. In Jesus' name, everybody says, amen, amen. Hey, have a great day in the Lord. Don't forget to get your, your tickets and stop by Josh and Heather's table out front. Be blessed, guys.